All right, good morning and welcome to the Pharmacogenomics Access and Reimbursement Symposium. My name is Sarah Rogers. I'm a founding board member and director at the American Society of Pharmacovigilance, where we are translating genomics technologies into improved patient outcomes by leveraging technologies like pharmacogenetics to prevent medication side effects. As part of our commitment to patient care, my colleague and I lead the Pharmacogenomics Access and Reimbursement Coalition, a dedicated group of experts and advocates who have joined together to expand patient access to PGX. Good morning. My name is Benjamin Brown, and I'm founder and CEO of Dynamic Life Sciences a strategy and health technology consulting firm focused on medical devices, genomics, and personalized medicine. I'm also executive director of the American Society of Pharmacovigilance, and as Sarah said, we both lead the Pharmacogenomics Access and Reimbursement Coalition. We're excited to have you here today. Precision medicine means many things to many people. The concept and terminology personalized medicine has existed since 1995. But recently, precision medicine has become a ubiquitous term. The promise of precision medicine, of optimizing and individualizing the treatment or prevention of disease on the basis of a genomic test result is a potential benefit to many. Precision medicine is a dynamic and changing area that has transformational systems potential and is increasingly influencing patient care and key stakeholders' bottom line. Ensuring broad access of patients to pharmacogenetics testing as key to the delivery on the potential of precision medicine. However, although there is high demand from patients and clinicians, there are challenges to achieving widespread access to PGX. Today, we are going to address those challenges head on. We are going to celebrate, champion, and introduce you to new ideas from around the world. We are going to celebrate, champion, and introduce you to new professionals, leaders, and recognized authorities that will share firsthand intelligence and personalized insight, some of which has never been discussed before in public. At the heart of our inaugural symposium is a commitment to educate, champion, and introduce you to new ways of thinking about the promise of precision medicine diagnostics. This will allow us, as a community and industry, to define new pathways for progress that will enable widespread access to safe, effective, and affordable pharmacogenetics testing for all. Back to Sarah. All right, great. We will be tweeting live from the PARC Twitter account, so you can follow PGXARC for real-time updates on PARS. If you're viewing through the webcast, you can submit your questions to the speakers through the webcast portal provided by TV Worldwide. And we are thrilled to co-present this inaugural event with the Golden Helix Foundation, an international nonprofit organization with interdisciplinary research in the field of genome medicine. Without further ado, we'll turn it over to our friend and colleague who is joining us remotely today, Dr. George Petrinos, live from Patras, Greece. So, uh, thanks so much. It's a, it's a pleasure to, um, to be here with you today, although remotely from, um, actually from Northern Greece, uh, Sarah, not uh, Patras, but Thessaloniki, where I'm preparing for a business trip. Uh, so in the next five minutes, I'll try to um, give you a brief overview of, um, of, the, of, of the partner organization that together with uh, PARC, um, we organized this inaugural PARS uh, meeting and uh, which we hope is going to be the first of, out of a series of events that's going to be organized in the next, uh, uh, in, the, in the years to come. So um, the Golden Helix Foundation, next slide uh, please Alejandro. Um, it's, uh, as Sarah said, an international non-for-profit organization that was established in 2003 and uh, it's involved in research and educational activities in the fields of pharmacogenomics and genomic medicine. Uh, the foundation is based in London, in, in Britain. Um, it has adopted um, uh, the UK charity status since 2013 and has uh, four regional centers, one in Athens, um, uh, to um, address the needs of Southeastern Europe um, in Alain in uh, Middle East, um, Kuala Lumpur in uh, Asia Pacific region, and lastly, uh, Cape Town uh, in South Africa. That's, that's a, re um, a recent addition. Uh, next slide, please. 
So um, the Golden Helix Foundation has both research and educational activities um, in the field of uh, pharmacogenomics and genomic medicine, and the, goal, and the educational activities include the conferences and the Golden Helix Academy. Uh, next slide, please. So um, we'll first start with the research activity. Next slide, please. And uh, next slide, you'll see some, um, some uh, snapshots of papers that have been produced uh, all these years. The, the foundation does not have a, a wet lab facility, but uh, it is heavily involved in dry lab and public health genomics uh, research. And as you can see here, um, we have the economics and genomic medicine. We have uh, public health genomics activities and uh, price and reimbursement, also databases. So in the next slide, um, uh, I'm going to uh, focus on the health economic evaluation activities that's related to um, the, 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 the PAR symposium that uh, you're going to hear today. So, um, one of the uh, prospective pharmacogenomic clinical studies that the foundation is involved, um, it's very actively involved under the leadership of uh, Christina Mitropoulou, uh, who is the senior um, economist uh, in, um, in the foundation is the PREPARE study, which is part of the Ubiquitous Pharmacogenomics project. That's a project that started in 2016. Um, recruitment of the patients has started in 2017, has completed earlier this year. Um, and the, the aim of this study is, uh, among other things, to uh, demonstrate cost and effectiveness coming from 14 clinical centers in seven European countries from a variety of medical specialties, which means oncology, cardiology, psychiatry, neurology, nephrology, and as well as primary care in, in the UK and pharmacies. Next slide, please. So this is the partner composition. The, the project is led by the Leiden University Medical Center and, um, uh, and basically the Golden Helix Foundation and Christina is a member of the executive committee of, um, of the UPGX project. Next slide, please. So, um, the aim of this study, especially in the health economic evaluation um, front, is to assess cost and effectiveness of genome-guided intervention using raw data. So, it's not only a prospective pharmacogenomic clinical study, which is among the very few that have been um, taking place uh, worldwide or have taken place worldwide, but it's also the one that uses raw data. Um, it includes a large number of patients, a variety of medical specialty, several clinical studies, and different countries in Europe, which means that this uh, refers to a variety of um, healthcare settings. And the project measures cost based on the reimbursement prices in every European country and effectiveness based on patient preferences by using questionnaires, which include EQ5D, the time trade off um, questionnaire, and the visual analog scale. Next slide, please. So the results are anticipated in early or even mid-2021, and these include the calculation of the ICER per poly for genome-guided intervention, that means the study arm, and this is going to be compared to the standard of care um, treatment approach, which is the control arm. Uh, and that's for every single uh, site out of the 14 that participate in this uh, study. Uh, we also aim to compare ICER with the willingness to pay uh, per country uh, to develop decision modeling and last but not least, to plot uh, cost-effectiveness access accessibility here. And um, we really envision that these results will lead decision-makers to reimburse genome-guided treatment interventions in um, all participating in this particular uh, study. Next slide, please. And um, inspired by this particular uh, project that I just mentioned to you, um, a new one is going to start in uh, the United Arab Emirates uh, this year. That was, uh, that's basically the the first uh, prospective pharmacogenomics clinical study in the, in the Middle East and Asia overall. Um, and envisions to measure cost and effectiveness data from over 2,000 cardiovascular disease patients from seven clinical centers in three Emirates, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and Sarjah. And um, again, the Golden Helix Foundation is going to be the lead partner in um, measuring cost and effectiveness in this interesting project. Next slide, please. And this basically demonstrates uh, the impact of this um, organization um, in this particular sphere. The economics of genomic medicine. Now, I have summarized some of the findings that um, uh, resulted from uh, involvement of the foundation in previous economic evaluation studies. You see two of those that we 
third developing countries, the Serbian uh, population for Clopidobrel and also the Croatian population for, um, for warfaring. Um, um, you see, for example, that um, uh, 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 next slide, please. Sorry, for some reason, my video was uh, discontinued. Um, so you see that uh, based on this particular, no, uh, the previous slide, please, Alejandro. So I just highlighted here that um, in Croatia, based on the findings of this particular study, uh, warfare treatment uh, was, uh, has started to be reimbursed in the Croatian population. You can imagine the impact of this particular study and the contribution of the foundation in, um, in uh, implementing pharmacogenomic testing in, um, in a developing country such as Croatia. Next slide, please. And there you see, uh, again, uh, two studies uh, measuring cost effectiveness in Spain for uh, clopidogrel treated patients and also DPYD genotyping for Italian patients suffering from uh, cancer to, um, uh, and that's based on the cost of chemotherapy induced toxicity. And not only that, we have also um, used uh, a meta-analysis to um, measure how economic evaluation can be applied um, to access feasibility of reimbursement for genetic testing. And um, let me say here that one of the unique um, aspects of the economic evaluation um, studies that, are be, that have been undertaken or being undertaken by the foundation is that they all include uh, prospective clinical studies and, they, they, um, uh, and all the data that are being analyzed are raw data, raw data, actual data coming from patients. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, as a result, you see that there have been two papers, uh, sorry, two books that have been published. One has been published in 2015, published by Academic Press, um, co-authored by members of the foundation. As you can see, they're underlined. You see among them Mark Williams, that we had the pleasure to work together to produce this particular textbook, one of the very few in the field. And um, a new one that's expected to be published in Q2 uh, in 2021, in which uh, Christina has, is the lead uh, editor in which we have the pleasure to, to uh, participate um, and co-edit with Sarah Horsworth and James Buchanan from um, Oxford University, by, with which uh, the Golden Helix Foundation has a long uh, partnership um, and collaboration. And as you can see um, in the book cover, that the Golden Helix Foundation is co-branded in this particular uh, book. Um, I, let me say here that um, I forgot to include my um, uh, Disclaimer, myself, I'm a molecular biologist, I'm not a health economist, but I may say here that um, despite the fact that the Golden Helix Foundation is not a high profile academic institution, um, uh, it's one of the lead uh, entities uh, in the field of economic evaluation in genomic and personalized medicine worldwide. And um, this can be, of course, demonstrated by the fact that they have attracted, um, uh, uh, in fact, funding from different uh, organizations have produced these uh, meaningful papers over the very few last years. Next slide, please. Uh, one of another uh, research activities is the Genomic Medicine Alliance. It's a national uh, research network um, in which uh, activities are self-financed by participants from funding sources and, and the Golden Helix Foundation. Coordination is provided by the Scientific Advisory Committee that comprised of 16 internationally renowned scientists in the field of genomics research and uh, to encourage participation from researchers from developing countries, registration is free of charge. And not only that, several perks are provided to those um, registered participants and uh, uh, network members um, to uh, um, facilitate their um, involvement in this particular network. Next slide, please. Uh, so the vision of this network is to bridge genomics research between developed and developing countries. Um, uh, uh, next one. You see that we encourage tech transfer, knowledge transfer, and training opportunities from developed to developing countries. And in the next one, you see that uh, from the side of the developing countries, um, they provide unique cases that can be analyzed in developed countries, well-defined populations, since many of those participating countries are isolated populations like um, the Arab countries or uh, countries in Latin America, and also the opportunity to partner for grant applications, especially multi-cultural, um, uh, sorry, uh, multinational uh, uh, grant uh, opportunities. Next slide, please. 
uh, and to move to the educational activities. We have the Golden Helix conferences, the symposia, which are research meetings like the one we are holding today, uh, the pharmacogenomics days, which are educational activities in the field of pharmacogenomics, and last, the Golden Helix summer schools, that they are uh, meetings organized every other year. And um, the vision is to, uh, are, are to uh, include training uh, sessions for uh, participants interested in delve deeper into the field of um, genomics and personalized medicine. Next slide, please. Um, those are the, 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 the brands of the conferences. You see that we try to maintain um, a consistent branding. Uh, the name comes, uh, next one, uh, from the uh, house of uh, Francis Creek. You see, uh, I'm not sure if everybody is aware of, but uh, he had a, a golden helix, uh, the main entrance of his house in Cambridge. And the idea there is that we try to uh, make an analogy um, of, the, of, the, uh, of the vision and uh, the goals of the foundation. Next slide, please. Uh, it's, a, it's a worldwide uh, uh, meeting series. Uh, so far, there have been more than 45 meetings organized in over 27 countries worldwide. Um, and I think this is not the most updated um, figure, but you can imagine the impact of those meetings, especially in developing countries. Next slide, please. And lastly, the Golden Helix Academy. Next one, please. Um, uh, it aims to provide e-learning and on-site and blended training courses in genomic medicine related topics such as uh, genome informatics, pharmacogenomics, nutrigenomics, public health genomics and of course last but not least economic evaluation of genomic medicine. And um, this is provided locally by academic uh, institutions in which uh, most of the times courses are accredited and provide academic certificates. Um, so I guess that's it. Um, thank you so much, Alejandro, for your assistance with changing the slides. Uh, it's a pleasure to um, to participate as the opening speaker in this uh, event. I'm very sure they can make it um, on site, and uh, I, would, I really like to wish you uh, success in this uh, inaugural meeting. Ben, over to you. Great. Thanks, George.